what made me write it. Um, I was rereading Ovid and the Metamorphoses, um, and I was really struck by the story of Pygmalion. So I'm sure that all of you know, but just in case you don't, so Pygmalion is an artist and he's strapped for marital options where he is. So what he does is he creates a beautiful statue and he prays to Venus and he says, Venus, I love the statue so much. Please, can you bring it to life? And then the statue is so perfect and Pygmalion is such a great artist that Venus decides that the statue should be brought to life. So Pygmalion gets this really happy ending where he gets to create the perfect woman and then she lives. Um, it's a really beautiful story and it's a great story, I think, that illustrates the dichotomy between the perfection that as artists we all strive for in our art, in our poems, and then the imperfections in life and how there's a certain magic that comes about when you try to transgress that boundary. Um, and I think that we all feel that struggle, like we all want our poems to be perfect. But as I was reading Pygmalion again, I also kind of thought about how uh, problematic that can be, or just like there's a bit of a tension there that when you look for perfection in your marital partner or whatever partner you have, or your husband or your wife, um, they won't always be as perfect as the poem you create or the statue Pygmalion uh, brought about. So I was just thinking about that problem and that tension between art and life and perfection and imperfection. Um, and as a result, I wrote this kind of snarky poem, just like Ed did, um, about an art professor. So I'll read that now. The epigraph is from Book 10 of the Metamorphoses from Pygmalion, which reads, um, so Pygmalion knew these women all too well. His instincts told him he'd better sleep alone. He took to art. And so this is the art professor. His wife will say no living soul should trust that skinny man. He reads too much and falls asleep at 10 p.m. He only lusts for crumbling effigies. In dreams he's called to bed by Hellenistic Artemis through drapes of Grecian white. A labyrinth's walls protect him as he steals the virgin's kiss, then lays his hand upon the goddess mold and sees her cobwebbed eyes alight with bliss, her bliss, his living art. Her ivory folds would shield him from banalities of strife and age. He longs for stones to shed their cold. Must only sculptors bring their work to life? Professors too can carve a perfect wife. 